news. Now, while Obama was president, he implemented a huge amount of regulations. And what Trump has been doing, he's eliminating many of the regulations that were put forth by Obama. 16 regs removed for every new rule that was introduced. The Trump administration has stopped over 800 regulations proposed under the former President Obama. And we see that Trump also halted about $181 billion worth of Obama administration regulations on his first day in office by issuing a regulatory moratorium. Additionally, the administration and Congress have saved at least $60 billion in regulatory costs by rolling back Obama rules through the Congressional Review Act. So we can see there are things that are being done, but the corporate media really doesn't want to report on this. Now, we see that Mueller, he is going after Trump. He's going after his personal finances. And Trump's lawyers and aides, well, they are scouring the background of the investigator and all the investigators hired by Robert S. Mueller. They're looking for conflict of interest they could use to discredit the investigation and maybe to have Mueller removed or have individuals removed from his team. Now, they're looking at this saying, well, let's take a look at each individual and see if they've given any type of donation to the Clinton campaign, because this is kind of a conflict of interest. And if most of his team is made up of these individuals, then we have a major, major problem here. So they're looking at these individuals, and the first one is Michael Dreben, and he serves as the Justice Department's Deputy Solicitor, Solicitor General and is working on a part-time basis for Mueller. Well, he donated $1,000 to the Hillary Clinton Senate Political Action Committee. Jeannie Ree, another member of Mueller's team, donated 5400 to Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Andrew Weissman, who serves in a top post within the Justice Department in the fraud practice area, he's the most senior lawyer, he donated, back in 2008, $4,700 to Obama. James Corliss, who served as an assistant special prosecutor on the Watergate Special Prosecution Force, has donated a dozen times to the Democratic PAC since the 1980s. And they're looking at all this and looking at the entire team saying, well, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. And of course, we knew this was going to happen. They placed these individuals into these certain slots. They brought them on. They brought Mueller on because what they really want is they're trying to remove Trump any way possible. Now, why do they want to do this? Because what is happening right now is that everything that they set up over the years for globalism, to maintain control, to push us into war. It's all coming apart right now. And they are trying everything they possibly can to stop what he's doing. Now, conservative watchdog group Judicial Watch and State Department representatives appeared in federal court in Washington, D.C. over the Freedom of Information Act, where, and this is the suit that Judicial Watch filed, seeking Clinton's emails from uh, her tenure at the State Department. Now, during the hearing, it was real that 7,000 new documents were turned over from Weiner's notebook computer, the same computer which prompted James Comey to restart the FBI probe shortly before last year's presidential election. Now, the stack of emails is also expected to contain some emails sent by Weiner's wife, Uma Abedin. Now, Judicial Watch President uh, President Tom said that they expect to begin receiving those documents in about three months or so. And once again, I'm sure they're going to publish them, show what these documents actually are and what they implicate, and we'll have to wait to see how that turns out. Now, we talked about this before, how the corporate media is out there telling us how bad North Korea is and we're getting information that North Korea's economy, well, they're showing record high growth, even though there are sanctions placed on their economy. Now, we've seen this in many countries where these sanctions, they really don't work the way they're supposed to, because again, these countries look 
for different ways to keep their economy float, to, to keep the system going. And they use barter. They work with countries. They use other currency. They might use gold or silver, or they might turn to uh, drug trafficking. I mean, this is what happens in these countries. This is what they do. And it looks like North Korea has turned to drug trafficking. And this is one of the reasons why the CIA wants to get into that country, because that's competition, because they're also involved in drug trafficking. But we see right now that their their uh, economy, well, it has increased by 3.9% in 2016. Now, this is according to the South Korean's Bank of Korea. Uh, they monitor North Korea. North Korea really doesn't put out any of this information. They look at what's going on there, and they put this information out there. And the information is gathered by the South Korean intelligence services. Now, it looks like coming out of the BBC, there's this warning that is urging all nationals in North Korea to depart immediately. Now, what they're saying is that all U.S. nationals that travel to North Korea will have their passports invalidated by their government. The ban comes one month after U.S. student Otto Warmbier died. Now, when you look on the U.S website they only have a warning back in may and it looks like this is just another warning and i don't see a new one that is out there as of yet but the bbc is tr out there trying to make everyone believe that something is about to happen and they're telling people not to go to north korea don't travel to north korea now of course this is going to be a problem for dennis rodman but we see right now that this might be a sign that the deep state Maybe they're planning to do something there because we have a couple of warnings here. We have one in Jordan, where it's a travel warning. We see the BBC is out there and they're warning people about North Korea. Now, the United States didn't officially come out and say this. They did back in May, but there's no other warning up to this point, not, not in July. Maybe they'll issue it a day or two from now, but it's just strange that the BBC has it way before the U.S. does which tells me that maybe this isn't coming from the U.S. Maybe this is coming from the deep state, and they just put this out there in the corporate media, because when people see this in the corporate media, they just think it's coming from the U.S. Now, they might be ready to do something, but Lavrov is out there, and he is saying, listen, Russia does not believe in regime change anywhere in the world, especially in North Korea. So it looks like the Russians are out there, and they're saying, Listen, if you're planning any type of regime change, think twice. We're still working out the details with North Korea and China. We're trying to solve this situation. So they must have some idea that something is planned and is in the works. And we need to remember, we're coming up to August where normally Congress goes on break and they don't come back until after Labor Day. So we'll have to see how this whole thing plays out because this is normally when the deep state likes to work. This is when they like to do things. Now, Trump is out there and he is saying that, you know, we might not be sending any troops to Afghanistan. He wants to hold off right now because he's saying that the Islamic State is almost done and finished with. And maybe right now we don't have to send any troops into Afghanistan. So all that talk of 5,000, 50,000 troops, that seems to be disappearing right now. Now, Lavrov is out there and he's striking back at the CIA's Pompeo. And he's saying, listen, Russia has the legal basis to be in Syria. We don't hide our bases. We have two bases in there. And the Syrian government invited us in. We set up bases. We're very open about it compared to the U.S., where the U.S. is in Syria illegally hiding the bases. Now, remember, Turkey, their news agency came out and they exposed the bases in Syria. And this was completely done on purpose because what does this do? It exposes what the U.S. was planning to do and what they're doing by building these bases. This is why this was done. This was a way to shake everything up. Remember, 
the deep state was trying to create this separate entity inside of Syria and then it was going to be run by the Kurds. And this is why they were setting up all these bases. This is why they don't care about the moderate rebels. This is why the Islamic State they don't care about anymore, Al-Qaeda anymore, because they knew they were beat. There was They knew there was nothing else they can do and this is plan B for them. And the moderate rebels, they don't know what to do at this point because they've learned that they're not going to be supported or funded. Now remember, this is a 15,000 plus rebel troop that the U.S., the deep state created and paid for and funded, not including the rest of the terrorist groups, the Islamic State, and they're all intertwined, Al-Qaeda, Al-Sham. So we're talking about thousands upon thousands of these terrorist groups that are no longer going to be funded anymore. And Again, this grouse roots uprising, it was no such thing. This was all planned and orchestrated by the deep state. They wanted to remove Assad and keep their empire building plan. And we can see the whole thing's falling apart now. And as it continually falls apart, guess what? This is when they might try something. And this is what we're seeing right now. We're seeing a lot of these travel warnings come out. We're seeing that Lavrov is out there and giving a warning to the United States, do not try regime change in North Korea. And behind the scenes, the Trump administration is working with Russia because we have the State Department officials out there and the U.S. State Department spokesman Heather Nauert is out there saying, listen, Russia and the U.S., they're beginning uh, a strategic stability dialogue where both Russia and the United States are going to be working with each other. And they're going to be working with each other on talks on strategic stability, convening a new meeting on the Bilateral Consultative Commission, overseeing the implementation of the New START Treaty, and we can see that things are actually moving forward in the relationship with Russia once again. Now, the deep state, they're going to be out there continually telling you that Russia is the enemy, Russia is the bad guy, and basically that Russia is ready to attack. Now, they're not going to let this story go, as we can see. And we know from history, hopefully this time it doesn't repeat itself, but we can see that the deep state... They wait for a specific time and a place to do something. And this is what we are looking at. This is what we are watching.